okay good day to everyone who is joining this webinar uh, first of all my name is Anas I am from Cybernet Systems Malaysia and I have been working here as an application engineer specializing in the mechanical business unit and also the fluid business unit so for today's webinar the, the title of today's webinar is going to be about the introduction to NCS mechanical so NCS mechanical is essentially one of the uh, products uh, offers by, for, offered by ANSYS. Um, it is ANSYS answers to the FE analysis for any kind of structural analysis. So if you are thinking of doing any kind of structural analysis which involves something like the uh, static structural or dynamics or vibrations, um, ANSYS mechanical is the way to go. So in this webinar we are going to go through what is ANSYS mechanical, what it can do, and also what to expect when you are planning to use ANSYS Mechanical in your design and development. So before we started, I would like to ask all of the attendees to please keep yourself muted throughout this presentation. And also if you have any questions uh, at any point of this presentation, uh, you may write your questions down in the chat box and I will answer uh, all of your questions at the end of this uh, presentation. So thank you for your cooperation. So next we move to the agenda. So we are going to start with a little introduction to the cybernet systems and then we move to the uh, a, bit on, a bit of overview of NC solutions and then I'm going to explain a little bit about NC's workbench and then I will also give an overview to the NC structure as a whole. And then we move to the NC's mechanical. So I will first give you an overview of NC's mechanical then we move to the features and also type of analysis that is available inside ANSYS Mechanical. Uh, a few application examples, uh, and then I will also show you the mecha ANSYS Mechanical workflow. And then afterwards, we move on to the demonstrations. So I've prepared uh, a demonstrations for you to uh, for you to uh, see for yourself what to expect when you are using ANSYS Mechanical. And then afterwards, at the end, we will have the Q&A session. So first, we are going to start with the introduction to Cybernet Systems. So Cybernet Systems uh, has been around for almost 30 years now. Uh, Cybernet System HQ is located in Japan. So we are the Japan's largest CAE software distributor tier one listed company and R&D and also sales subsidiary all over the world. So out of Japan, we, are, uh, we have four overseas sales subsidiary, namely the uh, Cybernet Taiwan, Cybernet China, uh, Cybernet Korea or CIFAM, uh, and also Cybernet Systems Malaysia. Uh, on top of that, we also have three software developer company, uh, which is located in the USA, Canada, and also Europe. So Cybernet System as an engineering solution provider uh, provide all sorts of solutions to essentially meet our customers need. Now those solutions include the CAA solutions, AR, VR, uh, AR and VR solutions, big data solutions, IoT solutions, IT solutions and also engineering service. For CAA solutions we are mainly focusing on supporting our customer in utilizing CAE in their way of doing businesses. So application areas that we, that we are supporting, including the mechanical uh, solutions, uh, optical solutions, electrical solutions, and so on. So next we move to the introduction to ANSYS. Now ANSYS has been around for more than 50 years now. Originally uh, started uh, in the USA, in Cannonsburg, Pennsylvania, to be more specific. Uh, and she started off providing the user uh, a software or a solutions for finite element analysis, for structural analysis. Uh, and then over time, ANSYS has been growing uh, to becoming this a one of, if not the most uh, used, uh, the most popular uh, CAE software out there. Now, nowadays ANSYS also provide not only for structural solutions but also fluid solutions, electronic solutions, 
uh, material solution, embedded software and system solution and so on. Now that uh, give an opportunity uh, for the user to do a multi-physics analysis as, uh, as well, which essentially combining several physics uh, together in one analysis. Uh, so you can do analysis that include structural analysis and also fluid analysis at the same time, uh, which is essentially one of the strong point of ANSYS. Now, due to the fact that ANSYS provide a lot of solutions for a lot of uh, customers out there, uh, ANSYS now have a global customer numbers of over 45,000 around the world and also has been used in a wide range of industries. Now that include industry such as the automotive industries, uh, aerospace industries, medical industries, uh, construction, so on and so forth. So as I briefly mentioned previously, uh, NCS support a lot of physics out there for you to, to, uh, to, to include in your application. Now these are some of the major, I say, product of ANSYS, uh, namely mechanical solutions, fluid solutions, electronic solution, solution for designers, and also some additional options on top of that. So mechanical solution, as you can expect, is more focusing on the structural analysis, uh, which can include static or dynamics, uh, impact analysis, thermal analysis, fatigue analysis, topology optimization, and so on. For fluid solutions, on the other hand, you can do something like the general purpose thermal fluid analysis, aerodynamic analysis, uh, rotating mechanical fluid analysis, and so on. On the electronic solution side, you can expect uh, or you can do the analysis something like the uh, S-parameter extraction or signal integrity, power integrity, and ele electromagnetic interference analysis, uh, and, and so on. Solution for designer is more focusing towards designer instead of CA uh, specialist. Uh, this product is uh, essentially more user friendly and more easy to use. Therefore, it is more suitable for designers who may or may not have any experience on using any CAE product before. So this comes in terms of the product called the ANSYS Discovery. Uh, ANSYS Discovery is specializing uh, in, in design and also analysis uh, for designers. And then on top of that, some additional options offered by ANSYS include the uh, parallel computing module, which essentially allows uh, for a parallel solving, uh, take advantage the modern you know, CPU, they have multi cores, so you can essentially run your analysis faster. Uh, and this also offers a material data selection library for you to, uh, to you know, to, to, to have a more robust, a more comprehensive material library uh, that can help you to further uh, explore the capabilities of ANSYS uh, without having the need to go through uh, or having the, having the need to go through the trouble finding suitable material for your analysis. Um, so next, I would like to introduce a little bit about the ANSYS Workbench. Um, now, before we talk about ANSYS Mechanical, uh, ANSYS Workbench is actually the first thing that you will see whenever you would like to use the ANSYS Mechanical products. So what is ANSYS Workbench? Uh, ANSYS Workbench is essentially the uh, central of which you, you do your analysis. So it allows for you to centrally manage all of your analysis processes within the same project schematic. Um, so in this case, it allows for a easy to understand analysis process uh, and also easy to understand the, the method of which you do your, your, you configure your analysis by the build and uh, by, by this uh, drag and drop uh, methodology. So as you can see right here on, on the screen, we have the setup of a thermal stress analysis. So you do the thermal analysis and then afterward you do the uh, static structural analysis to evaluate the stresses. So with the ANSYS workbench, you can easily draw, uh, drag and drop this uh, analysis into the project schematic, connecting them together and then uh, allow, you, uh, allow you to essentially uh, manage your all of your analysis in a more 
comprehensive and constructive way. Um, with NC's workbench, you can also do the multi-physics analysis that I briefly mentioned previously. So it allows you to drag and drop and combine few physics together. In this case, we can see a combination between fluid, fluid analysis and also structural analysis. Um, this can be achieved either by using one-way or two-way couplings workflow. Um, in this particular case, we can see that we are evaluating the thermal management systems of a PCB. And then from there, we would like to evaluate also the stresses being developed on in, inside the PCB. So we combine those two physics together uh, to, to establish a multi-physics simulation uh, workflow. And then this can be done with the ANSYS workbench. So now we move to, uh, we go through a little bit about why we do structural analysis. So why do we do structural analysis in the first place? So essentially structural analysis helps the user to understand more on the stress or strain of their structure, which eventually helps them to evaluate the factor of safety of the structure. It also allows for the user to evaluate the deformation of the structure. Um, also allows the user to evaluate something like the vibration response as well. Uh, and then afterwards, you can also even optimize the weight of your structure uh, to, 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 to further uh, reduce the overall cost uh, and ultimately making a better design. So structural analysis help you to understand all of this um, uh, aspect of the, of the study, of the development of your products. So some of the examples of structural analysis can include something like the composite analysis or fracture analysis, uh, rotodynamic study, which is something that involves a, a rotating movement of a structure. You can see the thermal effects of your structure as well due to any kind of thermal loading. Uh, you can further optimize your design by removing the material via the, the technique called topology optimization that also included in the structural analysis. You can evaluate the damage being imposed on your product from the drop test or impact test uh, and, and many, many more. So ultimate, ultimately what structural analysis allows you to do, uh, allows you is allows you to reduce the overall cost and also time of your product development um, but without uh, doing so, without having the need to build a large number of prototypes. So this kind of analysis, structural analysis, or I should say CA in, in, in general, allows you to uh, reduce the cost and time by, by eliminating the needs to create a large number of physical prototypes because everything can be done inside the computer. Uh, you can also, in, uh, because of the ever increasing requirements for, now, for today's products, you know, for today's product, you are required to make a more safe product, more environmentally friendly products, uh, a more economical products and so on. This does uh, essentially making uh, the, the design development process much more difficult. CAE or structural analysis as a tool will help you to, to, to essentially get close to this requirement or meet this requirement um, uh, in your development. So when we talk about structural analysis in the industries, there are a lot of industries that take advantage of this uh, particular analysis. Uh, ultimately, again, like I mentioned previously, allows you to evaluate stresses, deformations, so on and so forth. So uh, all of this is a valuable information that needs to be studied by a lot of industries out there. So you can expect the automotive industries will do structural analysis as well to, to evaluate the structural integrity of their chassis uh, for their crash test, or if you would like to see the vibration of the brake disc uh, or the sound being generated by the brake pads and so on. On the construction, again, we can evaluate the stresses being developed. Uh, a lot of material can be included in the analysis, so you can include the, um, uh, the material such as concrete, um, the reinforced concrete as well, you can include in your analysis. 
uh, like you see on the little graphics there we are uh, essentially you can mimic the actual uh, reinforced concrete impact test inside the computer software um, another industries that has been using structural analysis in their development include the manufacturing process uh, aerospace you know for the structural integrity of the components of the uh, aeroplane like the turbine blade and also the electronics uh, industries so essentially to evaluate the stress being developed on their components like their pcb uh, and so on okay now we move to the ansys mechanical so first what is ansys mechanical so ansys mechanical like i briefly mentioned just now is the best in class finite element solver uh, which the, uh, with the capabilities to do analysis such as the structural, thermal, acoustics, transient, uh, and non-linear capabilities to improve your modeling. So ANSYS Mechanical is a tool that, is, that has a complete range of uh, analysis capabilities to help you to uh, compensate all of your uh, applications, uh, you know, in, in your in your in your way of doing your design and development. Um, it allows uh, uh, the some of the advantages of Ansys Mechanical include easy to use uh, environment that include multi-purpose tool for you to choose from. It has a integrated platform like I show you in the workbench just now. Um, it has the one of the uh, most accurate solver technologies being embedded into the analysis of structural uh, and also other kind of analysis that you would like to do. Uh, the solver used behind the ANSYS Mechanical has been de developed since 1970. Uh, it is actually the beginning of ANSYS itself, therefore a lot of time and efforts, a lot of engineering resources being put be, uh, into the developing the solver of ANSYS Mechanical ever since 1970s um, and of course powerful non-linear and also linear solvers uh, uh, for you to, 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 to uh, use uh, for your uh, advantages so again like I briefly mentioned multiple times in the previous slide there are various simulation types available with ANSYS Mechanical so you can do either linear or non-linear structural analysis static or dynamic analysis, vibration analysis, thermal analysis. Uh, you can also do fatigue analysis to evaluate the life of your structure. You can also do structural optimization as well by using the topology optimization uh, and so on. So uh, there are many uh, features or simulation types available within ANSYS Mechanical. Um, I may not cover everything in this particular presentation. So if there is any kind of analysis that you will that you would like to do that I did not cover in this presentation, do let me know in the chat box. Um, so we go first with the first analysis uh, that you can do with Nancy's Mechanical, which is the structural analysis, both linear and also non-linear. So basically for structural analysis, you do this kind of analysis to evaluate the stress, the deformation, the factor of safety, um, uh, of your structure when you apply the load uh, on your structure. So the load can be in terms of force, pressure, displacement, and so on. Um, Nonlinear structural analysis, on the other hand, is similar to the linear structural analysis, only that you include the nonlinearity of the structure. So the nonlinearity of the structure can come in three ways. So it can come in the geometric nonlinearity which essentially includes something like the geometric hardening as the geometry deform to a certain uh, limit or certain extent, uh, your structure will becoming more stiffer. Therefore, the stiffness is no longer constant throughout the simulation time. Thus, the nonlinearity occur. Um, the nonlinearity uh, non can also occur by the contact changes throughout the simulation time. So whenever you have any contact changes, the, uh, the establishment of a new contact between two surfaces uh, and, and so on, this will, will also cause the stiffness to change throughout the entire simulation time, thus cause nonlinearity in your analysis. 
And then the, the, the third and final nonlinearity in the analysis is called the material nonlinearity. So material nonlinearity essentially means the behavior of the material itself is nonlinear. So it changes depending on the strain or stress being applied into the, that particular material. So something like a hyperelastic material or viscoelastic material. Now all of this is considered as nonlinear material. Now all of this nonlinearity can be included in your structural analysis uh, to allow you to get a more accurate result and also to compensate a lot of applications out there. So next we move to the buckling analysis. So buckling analysis or eigenvalue buckling analysis is the analysis for you to identify the uh, buckling load and also the shape, shape of the buckling of your structure. So with the buckling analysis, you can predict the, the fact, uh, factor value of the buckling with respect to the load that you apply initially uh, and also evaluate the shape of the buckling in in what way that your structure will buckle essentially. For nonlinear buckling analysis, on the other hand, similar to the linear buckling, only you can include some of the nonlinearities that I mentioned in the previous slide. So next we move to the vibration analysis. So vibration analysis in ANSYS Mechanical, have a, you, you have a few options for you to choose from depending on your application or what types of analysis that you are looking for. Uh, the first one here is model analysis. So model analysis it simply means uh, the analysis for you to determine the natural frequency and also the mode shape of your structure. Um, so this is very valuable for you to uh, create your structure or build your structure to avoid any kind of resonance. So you need to predict the natural frequency of your structure first in order for you to, to uh, put your structure in the operation in which uh, it does not uh, resonate. Um, another one here is the harmonic analysis, uh, which essentially means the analysis to determine the steady state vibration response uh, of a structure due to a harmonic load. So this harmonic excitation um, can be applied to your structure and then as a the result, we would like to see the response of the structure due to the excitation. The response can be evaluated in terms of the displacement of the structure, uh, the, the response in terms of stresses, uh, the strain and so on and so forth. So everything can be uh, evaluated essentially. So next we move to the another types of vibration analysis. The first one here being the random vibration analysis. So in some cases when we are dealing with the uh, input it can be non-deterministic, say for example, the input coming from the rough road at a certain stretch of road at a certain period of time. Uh, now that kind of input can be non-deterministic and also random in nature. So in order for you to do the, to, 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 to include this kind of excitation into your analysis, uh, you can extract those uh, vibration input from the road, for example. Uh, and then essentially create the, the, the power, uh, power spectrum. Then from the power spectrum, you can convert it into a power spectral density, which then can be used inside and is mechanical as an input. So this input is, it is basically non-deterministic, uh, is I should say statistical in nature. And therefore, when you do this kind of analysis, the result is also going to be a statistical in nature. Uh, you can still evaluate the response of your structure due to this, you know, uh, random excitation. So you can still evaluate the displacement, the, the, the stresses, uh, the strain and so on. Um, but by looking at the standard deviation that has been distributed. So the next one, the, another vibration analysis that we have here is the response spectrum analysis. So response spectrum analysis uh, is the analysis for structural response to transient excitation condition containing many frequency components. So in some cases like the earthquakes or waves or wind loads uh, within a certain period amount of time, uh, we, it, it, it contain many frequency components. So what we do is we essentially take the uh, maximum response of each of those frequency in a linear one degree of freedom system given the time history input 
and then we use that to plot the data as an input inside the ANSYS mechanical. And then again, from there, we can evaluate the responses of the structure in terms of displacement force, uh, displacement stresses, and so on. Um, ANSYS can also do acoustic analysis for your information. So this analysis allows you to investigate sound wave propagation in closed and also open spaces. So you can create this domain of which the, um, the, the acoustic domain, we call it, a, depending on which uh, region that you would like to evaluate, maybe you would like to evaluate the acoustic uh, or the sound propagation inside a cabin of a car, for example, or you would like to evaluate a certain amount of room, a certain region of room, for example, you can specify the re this particular acoustic region. So you can also express phenomena such as the reflection, diffraction, and interference in your analysis. Um, so the, the, the approach, you, you can do this using two approach. The first one is called the uh, mode superposition, which essentially you include model analysis in your, in, your, in your analysis. Or you can also do a full method which only include the frequency response analysis uh, in your analysis. So as the result, you can get something in terms of the sound pressure, so either in, 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 in pressure units or in, in the uh, DBA unit as well. So next we move to the fatigue analysis. So I briefly mentioned previously about fatigue analysis. Uh, this fati uh, fatigue analysis uh, was done to evaluate the life of your structure. So how long can your structure last before it fails, basically. So fatigue analysis allows you to do this kind of analysis to predict how long will your product last. So it, it essentially do this by taking into account the relationship between the stress, uh, stress uh, or strain uh, to the life uh, graphs. So you are required to have the SN curve of your material in order to do fatigue analysis. So you can do either high cycle fatigue which is uh, we call it a stress life or low cycle fatigue, which is where the strain is more prominent. Or you can also do the vibration fatigue, so fatigue due to vibration. So as for the result, you can simply evaluate the contours will highlight uh, the minimum amount of uh, time uh, of your product will last and also will, will also highlight where is the maximum life as well. So next we, move, uh, next we move to the dynamic analysis. Um, so first one here, we have the rigid or multi-body dynamic analysis. So this is essentially ANSYS's answers to the kinematic analysis. So for this part, uh, this type of analysis, you would like to see the behavior of your full assembly given the certain connection definition between the components inside your assembly. Uh, you can include, uh, you can uh, evaluate the results uh, of your components in your assembly in terms of its position, in terms of its velocity, and also in terms of its acceleration. You can also couple it with the static structural analysis to evaluate the structural response in terms of stress and also deformation as well, if you choose to do so. So another one here, we have the rotodynamic analysis. So this is the kind of analysis you do when you are involving in making a rotating products. So your structure is rotating um, for some reason for under operation, for example. Um, so this analysis uh, is to predict the potential hazard coming from the rotational speed of the rotating body. So as the output, you can create this Campbell diagram um, after the analysis. So you can create this Campbell diagram and then from this Campbell, uh, Campbell diagram, you can evaluate multiple uh, results such as the uh, critical rotational velocity um, being one of the results that you can evaluate. Um, so next we are going to take a look into the explicit dynamic analysis. Um, so uh, in some cases when we, when we like when we would like to simulate uh, an event that happened in a very short period amount of time 
uh, we cannot rely on the implicit method so we, we, we should move into the explicit dynamic method instead so explicit dynamic analysis is available inside NCS Mechanical so any events that happen in a very short amount of time um, or something that undergoes a, a very high nonlinearities uh, can take advantage of, NCS, uh, of the explicit dynamic analysis instead so the, the application that we can think of when it comes to explicit dynamic analysis can include something like a collision analysis or crash test or drop test or impact test, something like that. Um, ANSYS Mechanical also allows for a thermal analysis. So you can do both steady state or transient thermal analysis. Um, so essentially, what uh, the, the uh, thermal analysis is the, the analysis to find the temperature distribution uh, across your entire assemblies after we define a, a certain heat source or temperature as an input. Um, so with thermal analysis, you can include the all modes of heat transfer, including the conduction, convection, and also radiation in your analysis. Um, so with the thermal analysis, you can also do thermal stress analysis like I briefly showed you in the beginning. So thermal stress analysis essentially couple the thermal analysis and structural analysis together. So from here, we can evaluate the stresses being developed or the deformation that our structure undergoes when we apply a certain thermal boundary conditions uh, to our structure. So maybe at a certain temperature, our structure can deform at this rate, for example. So we can evaluate those kind of phenomenon uh, using this, uh, this, this method. Um, so next we move to the topology optimization analysis. So I briefly mentioned just now topology optimization analysis allows you to optimize your products or your components by removing certain amount of material out of your original design. So what we do here is that we evaluate the compliances of our structure initially and then from the initial compliances results that we get, we optimize it by removing the material in which sit in the region which essentially serve no purpose. So we essentially remove some waste material that we've uh, over designed uh, in our original design. So it's ultimately help you to reduce the weight of your products and you know remove the uh, the, the waste uh, when you are designing. Um, NCS also have the abilities to do a parametric study for optimization. Uh, this can be done using the, the the products or features I should say called the NCS Design Explorer. So Design Explorer allows you to do the what-if analysis. So in some cases, we would like to parameterize a certain uh, features on our products. So uh, we would like to see if we change something, if we change, say, for example, the thickness of our uh, shell here, what will happen on the final result. So ANSYS allows you to parameterize all of these uh, uh, features of your design and then evaluate which one is going to be the best. Um, so inside the design explorer you can expect features that you are most likely to found inside most of the uh, 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 parametric study uh, products or, or optimization products out there. So first one you can, you can expect that you have to find this parameter correlation analysis which allows you to do sensitivity analysis. Um, sensitivity analysis allows you to evaluate which parameters in your whole design is the most important which is uh, which parameters uh, influence your final result the most uh, in order for you to reach your goals so you can do that first using the parameter correlation analysis and then from there you can move to the optimization analysis you can set your goals and then you can use the result that you get from the previous sensitivity analysis uh, as the parameter uh, and then you can uh, create 
uh, few objectives. So it supports single objective or multi objective optimizations. So you can choose between these two after, after you've done set your objective. Uh, you can run the optimization and then you can evaluate your, your, your optimized uh, design based on the, the uh, response surfaces. One way for you to evaluate or you can also see the charts which already being uh, embedded inside the design explorer. And afterwards, you can take one step further and run Six Sigma analysis as well, which is available inside the design explorer as well. Um, so we move to a few uh, application example, I should say. Uh, the first one here being the structural analysis of the LCD touch panel. Um, so, you know, inside the LCD panel, we have the liquid crystal sit behind the panel. So whenever we do or we, we interact with this particular panel, whenever we touch it, whenever we swipe it, some stresses will be developed inside this panel. Um, ANSYS uh, mechanical with the abilities for you to include nonlinear material, like I mentioned previously. So you can include the viscous, uh, viscoelastic behavior of the uh, liquid crystal inside the panel as well in your analysis. Essentially allows you to evaluate the result uh, much more accurately. Now as for the movement of the finger, we can express uh, express this, this particular movement by, by uh, first uh, defining this hand uh, as a rigid body and then you can essentially emulate the, the movement, the swipe, the touch of, of real uh, human movement. Um, another application is the pipe bending analysis. Um, so from here we can evaluate something like the stress being developed or the if there is any defects such as wrinkling occurs on the pipe as it goes through this process. Um, as you can see, um, for this particular analysis, we only model half of the pipe and also half of the of the die and so on. So in ANSYS Mechanical, you can do so. So if you have any kind of symmetry uh, products or if your design is symmetry at a certain particular plane, you can cut those products in half at least. And then you can define the symmetry plane inside ANSYS Mechanical. And then you can run the simulation and you will get the result just as accurate as when you are doing the full model analysis. So essentially what you can do here is that you can cut the simulation time into half. <clears throat> um, next one here is the example of uh, explicit dynamic analysis. In this particular case, the PCB drop test. So with PCB drop test, we would like to evaluate the stress being developed onto the PCB itself. Uh, if, is, is there going to be any indent, uh, indentation on the PCB? Is there going to be any separation between the components and also the PCB itself? These can all be defined inside the ANSYS mechanical uh, before we run the simulation. We can also set the type of floor that is going to be hit onto. We can also set the height of the drops um, uh, for this for, for, for this drop test. So it depends on the, you know, the standards that you are trying to uh, refer to. Um, in this particular case, we, uh, we've defined the contact uh, or the interaction between the components and the PCB to, to, to separate uh, at a certain amount of stresses being developed. Um, so next, let's take a look a little bit on the ANSYS mechanical workflow. Um, so ANSYS mechanical workflow is actually quite uh, or pretty straightforward, I should say. So you can just follow from top to bottom you know, in terms of the workflow. So first we have the material definition. So this is where you define all of your material that you would like to use, or you can use the ANSYS library to find the material that you would like to use. So ANSYS have its own library um, that you can choose from. Uh, and then afterwards you can import the CAD into, your, uh, into the ANSYS environment. So your CAD model can come in all sorts of format. It can be in the solid work format or CATIA format or AutoCAD format and so on. So all of those can be imported into ANSYS. So next we move to meshing. So meshing again, ANSYS has uh, a lot of meshing capabilities, a lot of controllability. 
for your uh, mesh size or mesh shape, for example. So all of these can be controlled. After you've done your meshing, you can define your boundary condition. This is where you define your loads, your supports, and so on. And then after you define your boundary conditions, you can run the solver. And then you can evaluate your results in the post-processing stage. So you can evaluate something like the color contour, maybe the stress contour or the, or the deformation contour and so on. You can animate the result that you get or you can also generate the report. So in ANSYS, you can automatically generate report of the analysis that you've done inside the ANSYS. And then this report can be exported in, uh, in the Word documents. <clears throat> okay, so next we move to the demonstration. So like I mentioned previously, we have three de uh, demonstration in this case. So first, it's going to be a quite simple linear structural analysis. In this case, the pipe clamp analysis. So we apply a certain amount of forces preload to the bolt. And then we apply pressure inside the pipe and then see the stresses and deformation. The next one here is the thermal stress analysis of the ball grid array. So we have the BGA down here. We have the board. We have the chip. We apply the thermal boundary condition and then we would like to see how much stress being developed. Then lastly, we have the model analysis, which is the vibration analysis. Um, we would like to evaluate the natural frequency and also the mode shape of the structure um, by configuring one of the uh, uh, one of the aspect of the structure. So we are going to change uh, some of the thickness of the structure and then we see the results of the natural frequency of our structure, this frame. So here we have something that I mentioned before, uh, the ANSYS workbench. As you can see, the ANSYS workbench is <coughs> predominantly consists of project schematics. This is where you can lay down all types of analysis that you wanted to do in one single project file. So on the left side here, we have the toolbox, which consists of the analysis system, which consists of the types of analysis that you can choose from. Now, in this case, we are going to do a static structural analysis. Therefore, what I am going to do, simply choose this one static structural analysis and then drop into the project schematic as such. So now we already created our <coughs> analysis cell, we call it cell A, with a static structure under here. You can also rename this one. <clears throat> Example, man, right. And then if you, uh, uh, if you remember, I've mentioned before, the first step of the analysis will be the definition of the material. So how am I going to do that? Like I mentioned before, we are going to go with to the engineering data right here, double click on it. And then you will open a tab here, <clears throat> which consists of whatever material that, uh, whatever material that you want to use. Like I mentioned before, you can either create your own material, say for example, steel. And then here you can insert any type of material properties that you want, for example, density, and then maybe the <coughs> astropic elasticity. You can enter all of the material properties manually right here. Or you can go to the engineering data sources, which is basically a material library with ANSYS, and then simply choose whatever material that you want it to use. So we have a lot of material to choose from in this case. But uh, for this particular example, I'm just going to stick with the structural steel. Now, structural steel is defined by default. It is always going to be there. So I'm just going to use the structural steel for the material. Then for the next step, we are going to import a geometry inside our ANSYS uh, environment. So how I'm going to do that is right click on this geometry cell right here and then go to the import geometry and then browse for the geometry that you want to choose. 
in this case i'm going to select this one pipe clamp i already made the model before the i just going to simply add it or import it into uh NCs. now as you can see right here this green check mark right here this indicates that the geometry is successfully being imported into ANSYS. And then we, next, we are going to launch the ANSYS mechanical. How we are going to do that? Simply double click on model right here. And then it will start the mechanical, ANSYS mechanical. Okay, right now, as you can see, we have already successfully imported the geometry into our ANSYS environment. Now, as you can see, the first step that I would like to do is go to this geometry right here, expand it, and then check each of every, uh, every one of our components. So the first one here, we have the pipe, and then also the clamp, and also the bolt. So everything is there. And then the next part is we want to assign the material for each of our uh, each of our, of our parts right here. Now, because we are only going to use structural steel for all of our parts, so I'm just going to simply select all of these and then just select structural steel right here. And just like that, uh, each of our components right here has already been defined by the material that we just assigned. So say, for example, you have another material that you choose from the material uh, from the engineering data, it will show up here and you can just simply select it to assign to your uh, each of your particular components. <clears throat> and then the next step will be to check on the connection between your components. So here you see under the connection tree, we have contacts. Now, if you expand the contact, you can check there's a two to contact uh, in this particular case. You click on it and then you can see which part is in contact with each other. So you see the view. Now, as you can see properly, the outside wall of the pipe is in contact with the inside part of the clamp. And then for the next, uh, for the next contact, it's basically the bolt, uh, bolt surface which in contact with the clamp as well. So <clears throat> this is what I call before, this is what I said before uh, as a automatic uh, contact generation. So ANSYS automatically detect, uh, automatically read your assembly and then detect the contacts automatically. So if your assembly is as simple as this, it's okay to just let it be. But if you are dealing with a highly complicated uh, assembly, uh, it is worth checking the contact before you continue with your analysis. And then for the next step, like I mentioned before, is the meshing of our model. So, like I mentioned before, you can mesh this as easy as right click on the mesh and then click generate mesh. <clears throat> so right now, as you can see, it's already generated a good enough mesh to run an analysis to. But if you are not satisfied with the mesh, you can simply add more setting or add more local control on it. For example, I want to adjust the sizing of the clamp. I right click on the mesh right here and then go to inserts and go to sizing. On the geometry, I'm going to select the clamp right here. <clears throat> And then for example, I'm just going to change the element size into maybe 1.5 limited. And then you right click on this clamp right here and then generate mesh on selected body. So, so there you have it, as you can see, the mesh is already been refined. So there's one of the capability offenses you can really be specific of which you mesh your model. Uh, maybe the more important part of your assembly need to be meshed more. You can do that by using the sizing control. And then the next step is to define the boundary condition. 
uh, of our assembly or of our model. To do so, we are going first to the analysis setting. And as you can see here, we have a step control. Now, the step control basically uh, allow the users to change uh, the load step of which the load is happening. Say, for example, in this particular case, I will have two types of loading. The first one is the bolt pretension, which a force coming from the bolt. And then the next load is coming from the pressure inside the pipe, which is come after we load the bolt. So that uh, there is a two, uh, there are two type of load steps. So to do so, we are going to the number of steps right here and then select two, click enter. <clears throat> and there you have it, we already have two type, uh, two step analysis. Then what I'm going to do next is insert bolt pretension. On the geometry, I'm just going to select this surface right here. I hit apply and then on this the first step i'm going to load with a 200 newton of load for the second step i'm going to lock it in place so there you have it we already defined our bolt pretension simple step and then we are going to also include the pressure inside the pipe. So I right click here and then select pressure. And then on the geometry, I'm going to select the surface of the pipe, inside surface of the pipe. And then here, we are going to control which step that the pressure is coming from. For the first step, you are going to let it zero. And then the pressure is coming um, from the <clears throat> On the second step, which is uh, one megapascal, then of course we're also going to include the fixed point here on this hole right here. So we are just going to solve it by clicking solve right here on top of our screen in the ribbon. Now, the simulation time may vary depending on how many cores that you are running with because NSYS does support a parallel processing. Therefore, if you have more than one core in your processor, you can take advantage of the capabilities of parallel processing. And then next for the post-processing, what I'm going to do is that I, let's say I'm interested in the deformation. So I'm just right click on the solution, insert, you can choose between what you want. Next one, I want to see the stress. And also I want, I would like to see the stress again, but only for the clamp part right here. So on the geometry, I select clamp, then click apply. And then simply right click on the solution and click on the evaluate all results. So now you can see <clears throat> what happened. This is what I call, uh, you can animate the results with the ANSYS, uh, ANSYS post-processing. This way you can help, uh, it can help you to understand what's going on even more. So in this case, you can see on the first step, uh, the load is coming from the bolt pretension and therefore this this one is moving first, and then you see the pipe is slowly moving out, uh, outward as the pressure coming into the pipe as well on the second step. Now, this is an exaggeration animation because I can control if I want to see it in true scale. I can select true scale, but then it is a little bit hard to uh, visualize what's going on. So let's say I need 0.5, okay. And then, of course, you can also see the stress. On the left side here, we have the legend, which indicates uh, the maximum and also the minimum stress across your assembly. 
So as you can see, the maximum is 99 megapascal, which is happening, I believe, around here and around here as well. Then also we can evaluate the clamp and also animate it as well. Okay, so that is for the first example. Uh, there's basically like a step-by-step -step, uh, procedure of how you want to run or how you want to do an analysis in science is mechanical. Now for the next two uh, examples, I'm just going to get through it uh, quickly because uh, I've already shown the procedure. For the next two, the procedure will basically be the same. So first, let's take a look at the steady state thermal and the static structural coupling analysis. So like I mentioned before, this is a coupling analysis. As you can see, we have a steady state thermal on the left side and the static structural analysis on the right side linked together by a series of uh, connection right here. Now, how you want to get to this two analysis right here? Uh, for, for example, you drag the steady state thermal analysis anywhere inside the project schematic. And then you also drag the static structural analysis and then drop it into the solution cell right here. And there you have it. You have a coupling analysis, simple as that. Now for this one, I'm just going to show you the results. Okay, so here we have the <coughs> steady state thermal coupled to the static structural analysis. The first step, is of course we define the material on each of our geometry and then you also check the connection in this case there's a bit a lot of connection because there's a lot of part involved uh, and then for the <clears throat> for the uh, boundary condition we input the internal heat generation at the center of the chip right here and then a heat flux on this part right here and also convection on this surface right here. As the result, uh, temperature result from that uh, setup, we have something that looks like this. Uh, expectedly, uh, the maximum temperature is coming from this part right here. And then as it moves away from the, the internal heat generation source, uh, getting cooler and cooler due to the uh, convection and so on. Now, uh, from this temperature, <clears throat> this temperature distribution right here, we want to use it as the boundary condition for the static structural analysis. So as you can see here in the imported load, we have the imported body temperature, which is used as the boundary condition or used as a load for the static structural analysis. We also include a bit of uh, fixed support and also some frictionless, uh, frictionless support. Because this is a static structural analysis, we need to keep everything fixed. And then as the result, we have something that looks like this. So this stress is strictly coming from the temperature that was generated by this part right here, which we analyzed in the steady state thermal analysis just now. So as you can see, uh, as expected again, most, uh, <clears throat> uh, most stress coming from here due to the very high temperature around this region. And then of course you can also view the result for the uh, ball grid array right here. How does it, uh, how the stress distribution uh, coming to this ball grid array. Uh, and then of course, like I mentioned before, you can also animate and see how the stress or the deformation took place. Okay, so that's for the second example. Now for the next example is the model analysis. Now, like I mentioned before, there's two types of uh, geometry that we use, and then we are going to compare between those two. Now, remember model analysis is to find the uh, natural frequency and also the uh, mode shape of the structure. So here we have the model uh, model frame A 
and also frame B. Now, if you can see properly, frame B does have slightly different shape with frame A in this region right here. You can see it is slightly taller in this part, in this rate right here. And then we would, we would have expect that the frame B will have more structural integrity because of the shape right here. Now, again, the setup is almost the same as the static structural analysis. Uh, only this time we include the point mass in the middle, like I mentioned before. Instead of using an actual geometry as a mass, we simply use point mass to reduce the simulation time and also simulation force. And then again, next step, we check on the connection and also the mesh. And then we uh, put a little bit of uh, fixed support at these four holes, these two here and this, these two here. And then for the analysis setting, uh, the max model we want to find in this particular case is six. But if you think that your model will have more important modes to find more than six, then you can always adjust this number uh, according to your engineering judgment. <clears throat> and then the result is as shown. This is the first mode shape, which has happened at 61, around 61 hertz. And then let's take a look at the frame A. So the first mode shape is happened at 51 hertz. Therefore, we can conclude that uh, for this particular sort of geometry, the frame B holds uh, a better, uh, have a better structural integrity uh, as proved by the natural frequency that happened uh, that we find out from this model analysis. And then, of course, you can also animate to see uh, the mode shape of our model. Then we can check on the second mode shape as well. This is happening at 141 hertz. And then, of course, you can go through all of it up until six because we only got six in this particular case. Again, same thing. But based on the frequency, natural frequency generated right here, we can conclude that frame B is more stiffer or stronger than the frame A. Okay, so that is all for the demonstration. So I would like to thank you all very much for tuning in for today. Um, so we are already at the final of our final time of this particular presentation. Now we are open for the Q&A. If you have any questions, you can write it down on the chat box or maybe you can contact us afterwards by using this number you see on the screen right now.